Right, so the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Okay, so this section we're going to elaborate more on what line integrals are and how to simplify line integrals in an easier way to find them. Uh, because parametrizing them to either x, y, or t, you know, could be cumbersome depending on what we want to do. So in this section, we're going to talk about two different types of curves. So the first one's going to be a smooth curve, and the second one is when it's not a smooth curve. So we can see how we're going to do both individually. Okay, but first we're going to do a quick little definition of what a smooth curve is. So let's see be a smooth curve with a vector function r of t, where a is be, uh, t is between a and b. Let f be a differentiable function with two or three variables, whose gradient vector is continuous. So here is the most interesting part of all. So the line integral over a curve or a gradient is equal to just f of R, of R and B minus F of R and A. Okay? So in other words, it's just the function itself at the vector itself, which is pretty interesting, right? It makes line integrals much easier to deal with. So the question now becomes, how can we make this U more useful? Okay? Now there's one very special definition we're going to be doing this entire section, and it's right here. Something called a conservative vector. Okay? So a vector field f is called a conservative vector field if f itself is equal to the gradient of f. Okay, so if the vector field is actually equal to the partial derivative of the function itself. And that's going to get more, so, but for now, we'll just say that's what's called a conservative vector field. Okay? Now notice that makes it much easier because now we do, we do line integrals. For this instance, right, for our definition, we could just substitute that and we just this will be a new definition of a line integral, as long as it's a called a conservative vector field, right? which makes it much easier to do this integration. We don't have to figure out all these bound stuff and manipulations. So the question now becomes, right, how do we know if it's actually a conservative vector field? And that's what we're going to be doing when it comes to this section. Um, but for now, let's just start with a simple example illustrating this definition. Okay? So let's find the work done by the force field, this moving from 3, 4, 14, or 3, 4, 12 to 2, 2, 0 along the smooth curve C. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that this is, called, is, is a conservative vector field, just for now. So that way you can see the example how this would work. So according to our definition, because it's a conservative vector field, we know this is equal to the gradient of F. So now this is going to be the curve, or the line integral of the gradient of F times dr, equals exactly that. So this is going to equal to the function of f, the original function, at the point, well, from our closure, so the point itself, so 2, 2, 0, minus f at the point, 3, 4, and 12. Okay. The whole point is, well, what is the original function? That's something we're not given. So that's actually the, the whole work to do. So is, figure out what the f function was to begin with, and then plug them in and then call it a day. Okay? But again, sometimes that's going to be a little difficult to deal with itself. Right? But again, for now, since there's a simple example, I will give you what f is. So our f in this case, our original function, look like this. So if we take the gradient of f, so we take the derivative of x, y, z individually, we will get exactly that back. Okay. So now we're going to just plug in each point itself. So plug it in 2, 2, and 0 in for x, y, and z. So 2 squared is 4, 2 squared is 4, so and z squared is 0, so that's going to be just square root of 8 on the bottom, minus plug it in 3, 4, and 12 in here respectively is going to give you the square root of 169, which is just 13. And there we go. So that subtraction is our integral. Much less work to deal with it, right? So now the question now becomes, okay, if I have a conservative vector field, our line integral actually becomes much easier to evaluate. So that's what the whole section is about, is how do we know if a vector field is actually a conservative vector field? Okay. But before we do that, there's a couple more definitions to deal with itself. So something called independent paths. Okay? So given two smooth curves, x, c1 and c2, 
that have the same initial and terminal points. So let's suppose we have like A and B here. So we have curve C1 and then curve C2. So two different curves, but they both have A, both A and B terminal and initial points. Now, we have this portion. So one of the biggest things when it comes to line integrals, right? So since we have two different curves, therefore the line integrals will be different. Because line integrals depend on the initial and final. So if those are the same, therefore the path is independent of each other, right? There. So they're, that's what changes, right? That's where the answer is going to be. However, this is the most interesting part. If the line integrals of C1 equals the line integral of C2, so meaning if I integrate with respect to both paths individually and we get the same result, therefore these two curves are called independent paths. And that's actually nice. OK, well, that's all fun and dandy. But again, how does this help us show if we have a conservative or not conservative vector field? Well, that's part of it. Because now we can extend this out to a vector field instead. Right? Whatever we do with line integrals over uh, curves, we could do to a vector field curve. So now this is the most important thought, uh, part is if two line integrals of two curves are the same, then the line integrals of conservative vector fields are independent of paths. And that's the key thing right there. Now this is so important that we give it a name. Okay. So independent paths. If this line integral is independent of path D, if and only if the line integral equals 0 for every closed path C in D. And this is if and only if. So if, if two paths are independent, therefore their, inter their line integrals are going to be 0. And if their line integrals are 0, therefore it is also independent. These two paths are independent. Okay. Now, what does this mean by uh, in space and curves? Because this is only in two dimensionals. So when it comes to space curves, how this is going to work out is we have two different scenarios. The first case is D is open. What that means is for every point P and D, there's a disk with center P that lies in D. So I'm going to have this random surface, and we'll call that D, and we'll have any point on here, call it P, where I can make a disk that's centered at P. That's what we mean by open. Now the key thing is we do not have no boundary points. So it's strictly within the realm of D. Now the next situation is connected. So we say D is connected if any two points D are connected by a path that lies in D. So again, I have some random surface D, and pick any two points on here, say P1 and P2. So therefore, I can find a path that connects both P1 and P2. Okay. Now, if you're wondering when do we never have this happening, it's pretty straightforward. So for example, open means we have a boundary point. Because then we don't have a disk, we have a half disk. So that's a no, right? So not open. Okay. Now, the next situation is, well, when if it's not connected? And the most obvious one is if our surface or our points D are cut in half. So therefore, like something like this, where, you know, there's no way to connect both points together. 
You know, the other one is very interesting if we have a divot like that, so like the figure eight. So P1 and P2, there is no path that connects it because it's technically cut right there. There's only one point to go through it. Okay? So these will be not connected. So we're going to be only looking at these ones here. Now, again, why is this so important? It's because suppose F is a vector field that is continuous on an open connected region. If the line integral is independent, is an independent path of D, meaning this is true, right? then F is considered a conservative vector field. So in other words, if we put these two uh, definitions together, if we have this happening, therefore it's a, therefore F is considered a conser uh, conservative vector field. Okay, that's pretty nice, right? We don't, okay, we got that, but again, that we, we still got to do an integral, you know, we still have to do a, an actual line integral, which is something we don't want to do, right? Just to go backwards and say, oh, well, we could have done that from the beginning. So, but it's something, right? That's a key thing. So now again, the question is, how do we know if it is actually? Without, you know, just a quick little check before we do all of this fun stuff, because it doesn't really help going back that way. Okay. So for that, we're just going to do a little bit of algebra. So we know what we have. So we're going to say let F be an actual conservative vector field. So we're going to go work our way backwards here. Okay, so because we know this is a conservative vector field, therefore we also know that this is equal to the gradient of F by definition. Okay. Now, because we know that, we know P, or the function of P, is equal to the derivative of F with respect to x, right, that's what the gradient represents. And we also know that q is equal to the derivative of f with respect to y. Right, that's the definition of the gradient. So, there was a very special theorem way back in the day, and it's called Clout's theorem. Or Clarence's theorem. That stated, well, if we take the partial derivatives, so this with respect to y now, or in other words, or another would be like that, right? To respect to x, then y, or vice versa, really doesn't matter. But if we take this derivative, so we take this again with respect to y, so this is just going to be dp dy, y just equals that, so this is the second derivative, and we do the same thing on this side. This time with respect to x. So again, what we're doing is now that. Well, his theorem said these are actually the same. Well, would you look at that? So we kind of have a little bit of a check when it comes to a conservative vector field. So if f is a conservative vector field, therefore, the derivative of this respect to y and this respect to x actually equal each other. Okay, that's nice. It's not a way to check if we have one, but it's a good property, right? That's, you know, maybe this will lead up to it itself. But there's one very last thing before we get to a big theorem, and that's just called simply curve or simple curves. Okay? So a simple curve looks something like this. In other words, there is no break in between it, right? So not one. And we're going to talk about when we do Green's theorem, how we do these. That's why he's so popular. And then go into Stokes theorems as well. Okay. Now, so again, we're only using these for now. These we'll do for later on. Okay. But this is why the big thing we want. The definition of a conservative vector field. If f is equal to p of x and y, the, you know, the 
the vector field of it. And we have an open, simple curve, meaning that. And it's connected, right? Hence, it's being open. So uh, some very arbitrary point, we can find a disk on it, as long as it's not on the boundary. Then, if this is true, F is a conservative vector field. And that is what we want. Because now, we can connect the very first theorem we had to what we have to be a conservative vector field. So it's a nice check. So this line integral ends up being very easily, as long as now we can check if it's a vector, conservative vector field or not. Because if it is, we can automatically go from straight to here and easily do our integration of the, of the line integral itself. Okay. If it's not, then, you know, obviously we have to do the old-fashioned way, but it's a nice little check to do so. Okay. All right. So let's try an example of how this would work. So now we can check if it is or not. So determine whether or not the, the uh, vector field is a conservative vector field. All right, so that's very simple. We're just going to check. So this is P. That is Q. So for P, we're going to take the derivative spec to Y. So I'll just For sure, I'll just do PY. This is going to be negative 1. And now derivative respect to X also gives you negative 1. So check. They equal each other. Therefore, automatically, this is conservative. So, yes. Boom. Okay, so now if it's conservative, we know that F itself, this vector field, is equal to the gradient of F, which leads us to our next example right here, is now if we have this happening, and we know this is a conservative vector field because we just proved it, then we want to find the function f that makes this true. Okay. All right, so like I said earlier, so we know that df dx or fx is equal to 2x minus y. We know df dy or just f of y is equal to negative x plus 2y. Okay, so we want f itself, right? So we got to go backwards. Well, if this is the derivative, so therefore to go backwards, we have to integrate. So we're going to integrate this with respect to x. Just like that. So now if we do so, this is going to give me x squared minus xy plus some constant c, right? Okay. Now, if we do the same thing on this side, but this time I'm going to integrate with respect to y. So this can be negative xy plus y squared again plus some constant c. Okay. So remember, we want f itself, right? What was the original function we had before we took this part? Now, notice they have this in common, which is nice. Okay. Now, this c value looks like it's going to be part of this when we integrate with respect to f. So if we take the, this derivative, this whole thing with that, notice this goes away, which makes sense, right? Because it's not part of our partial derivative. And on this side, notice this goes away. When we take the partial derivative, it gives us that. So it looks like our function is going to be x squared, what they have in common, minus xy plus y squared, plus some constant c. And there we go. There's our original function. So that's the function that created all of this to be true. Pretty neat, huh? So now, finally... After we do all this, now let's find our integral. So let's find our line integral of f dr. Now remember, we just proved that this is a um, conservative vector field. So this is the exact same thing as a line integral 
of the gradient of f times dr was just equals to f of r of b minus f of r of a. Right, we just proved that. That was the whole point and make this integral do much easier. Right? And the good thing is we're given our vector r right there. So, and we just found what f is. So, what we're going to do now is plug in initially what's going to happen. And we're given from 0 to pi. That's our a and b respectively. So now all we're going to do is plug in our a and b into r. So we'll go a first. So if I plug in 0 in for my vector, so sine of 0 is 0. So I'll just put it in vector form like that, sine of 0. And cosine of 0 is 1, and e to the 0 is 1, so it's going to be 1. And now we do r of b. And it's pi, so sine of pi is 0. And again, 0 times anything is still 0. And now uh, cosine of pi is negative 1. So it will be negative e to the pi. Okay. okay, so now we're going to go back up here. And we're going to plug each one respectively into there. All right, so first, f of r of b. So that means I'm going to plug in 0 for x. And for y, is going to be negative e to the pi. So 0 for x, well, that's 0. That's 0. This squared makes you positive. So I'll just um, 2 pi. And then plus, com so plus some constant c. OK, so now we just plug in f of r of a. So now, again, this is going to be my x. This is my y. So again, x is still 0, so a lot of it just goes away. So that's gone. That's gone. And then just plug in 1, we just get 1, plus some constant c. So we subtract. So it's going to be this minus that. So we get e to the 2 pi minus 1, plus some constant c. Now remember, C is some random constant, so you can let it you can let it be anything you want. I'll just let C equal zero. So therefore, our line integral over this vector field, over this curve, is just going to be e raised to the two pi minus one. Okay. okay. Let's try one more example. So let's find f when our vector field is equal to all of this, so this is in three dimensions, such that the gradient f equals f. Okay. Well, we're kind of told, but we still got to just show, just check, just in case. You know, does it actually equal that? Right? So let's try that out first. So, is it a conservative vector field? So we haven't really gone over the three-dimensional one, but I'm just going to show you what it would look like here. There. So that would help you show it if a vector field in three dimensions is considered a conservative vector field. So because we have three dimensions, right? So we just do the third derivative because you have to do x, y, and z respectively. So we do this twice. Okay. 
Now, for our case, I'll say it is a yes. It says you want to prove it's already shown to us to be told that. But fun little fact there as well. Okay. All right. So we want to find f such that this is true. So we know the gradient of f is equal to y squared 2xy plus e to the 3z. And then finally, 3y e to the 3z there. Okay, so we're going to kind of do the same thing we did last time. So we're going to take the integral of this with respect to x. Remember, this is x, y, and z. So we're going to take that integral. This is going to give us to x, y squared plus some c. And we do the same thing for the other two. So now we take the integral with respect to y this time. This is going to give me xy squared plus y e to the 3z plus c. And you can already tell we have something in common. And then finally with respect to z. So this is a u sub. So dividing by one third, the threes cancel, and we're left with just y e to the three z plus c. So these two have that in common, and these two have this in common itself. So it looks like our function with respect to x, y, and z is going to be equal to x, y squared plus y e to the 3z plus c. And again, you can use any c you want. So you could say if you want, let c go, you could put 100 if you want, or just 0 or 1. It'll still give you the same thing, right? The constant will just go away itself. And you can always check, right? Take the derivative with respect to x. That should be 2x squared. Oh, sorry. With respect to x is just y squared. There you go. This is gone. Do with respect to uh, y, 2xy. This is just that. Check. And then finally, do with respect to z. That's gone. With respect to z, so that's, again, it's a chain rule. Drew the inside times drew the outside, so drew the inside is just three times drew the outside, which is going to be itself. So it works. So that is our function f we were looking for. So if we really want, we could have done this line integral in three dimensions, which we'll actually talk about later on in the course, and then we could just use this definition to do that.